Matthew chapters numbers 15, the 15th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. And verse numbers 8. Verse numbers 8. The Bible says here, This people draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Lord, we thank you. We honor you. <clears throat> and Lord, we pray God may you bless your word to our hearts. And Lord, we just want to give you the praise and the honor and the glory. We exalt and we uplift your name. And so Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 And so, of course, uh, here is Jesus again in uh, one of these other debates there with the scribes and the Pharisees. Amen? And as we know, as we read the gospel... We know that Jesus did not enjoy a perfectly good relationship with them. Right. Everything was correct on his end. They were the ones that had the problem. Right. Right. But they acted and they spoke to one another and they spoke to the public and they spoke to the authorities as if it's to say that Jesus was the one that had the problem. But we know better than that. Amen? That he had no faults or he had no problems. And so here they're in a debate with him. Or he in a debate with them. And they are mentioning things, of course, which is just tradition. And Jesus is trying to refute what they're saying. He's trying to refute them or rather to put them straight, if you please, so to, to, for, to say it in a better way. He's trying to get them straight. Because so often... What they're doing is that they hold to their traditions and they uphold the traditions as if it's to say that it is gospel or it is Bible. Right. See? And they hold it in a higher esteem than scriptures. Right. I mean, many of the arguments that you would have with them in regards to the law and the Sabbath... It is because he's arguing with them. Because if you would know that, of course, uh, uh, within a certain period of time, when there was so great silence, the Jews, they, the, the Pharisees and the Jews, they, they implemented a lot of their own Sabbath rules. Yeah. You mean? That is not scripture. So that's why oftentimes Jesus, uh, he and those, and those Pharisees are always having an argument in regards to Sabbath and all of that. All he's doing is refuting what they are trying to hold to as Bible, and whereas it is not. Right. Amen? And so Jesus here, in refuting them, he comes to verse number 8. We look at verse number 8 in part of the rebuttal or the response to them. And Jesus says that these people, they draw it nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor it me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And so they gave a lot of lip service. They, they spoke out. They talked a lot. Amen? Yeah. They talked a lot. I mean, it was just talk and talk and more talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, kind of like in a political realm, that politician, they talk and talk oftentimes and more and more talk. Amen? Yeah. And so that's what it is. But Jesus, of course, was very concerned in the other part of that. He says, but their hearts are far from me. He's always reaching to the heart of man. Man? To the heart of man. God, in the commandments, he tells us, Love the Lord thy God with all our hearts. Man? All our hearts. So no doubt that these people were doing something. But whatever it is that they were doing, God wanted more than what they were doing. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is that because that would be our subject tonight that what we're doing God wants more than what we're doing right. he wants more than what we're giving yeah. he wants way way more what he wants is that in the church we have lots of participation yeah. but God wants us to move beyond participation yeah. and he wants us to give our heart yeah. because I'm sure that there is not much of a problem 
when it comes to participation you'd see that lots of churches of course they every year their faith promises sometimes oftentimes go up and up and they're able to support more and more missionaries and to god be the glory for that so it tells us there's lots of participation happening in the church people are at their post and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing with all those things being done from the heart so he said they call upon me with their lips and honored me with their mouths their lips and mouths they call upon me but with their heart and you know what he wants us to move beyond participation and move to giving and doing what we're doing with our hearts. And the first point we'll see here, according to a text, of course, we'll turn to some different places. Of course, when it comes to the matter of praise. When it comes to the matter of praise, God wants more than our participation. Stand up. Open your songbook. Sing. Let's sing this song. Let's do this. And boy, I'll tell you what, we are ready to participate there are no problems as far as participation is concerned i'm sure that there are at least 99 percent of participation when it comes to praising god on that sunday morning or sunday evening, whatever those given times are when it comes to the praise and the worship service we good as far as where participation is concerned there are hardly any person that rebels or or, or, or goes against and said i'm not going to stand i'm going to just sit as long as they are physically able to do so i doubt that there is any problem as far as where participation is concerned i doubt that there are any problem when people say let's sing and that people open that songbook and as long as they're able to see those words and read those words they sing out right. but that is participation yeah, right. is all of that coming from the heart he said because the time will come that when they, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth because he doesn't only settle for participation we like participation as long as we see someone is participating we are happy about that but god is not happy with only mere participation he's happy when it comes from our heart and i'll tell you what we have to agree that that is something that is lacking a lot in the Christian realm. And the reason why it lacks and the reason why it is like that is because we accept participation. We have no problem when people participate. We are all for it. Man, did you see all these people? Did you see everybody lift up their hand? Did you see all those young people? Man, I tell you what, they were really, and all we see is participation. But I'm glad that we serve a God that is able to look beyond all that action all that participation and can look right down in our hearts Amen. so when it comes to the matter of praise we have learned how to do it we know when to say amen we know when to say glory to god we know when to do it and so as a result of that we become very mechanical about it if you please and so but it is not real and jesus is identifying here he said that they call upon me with their mouths and honor at me with their lips but their hearts are far from me and i would dare say that in our churches today and in christianity today is the same thing that will be echoing you know we seriously criticize the scribes and the pharisees and but i would say that we are worse than them we are worse than they are because we have the scriptures we see the errors and yet for all we repeat it we do the same thing and i'll tell you what shame on us shame on us you see when it comes to praise remember we are honoring the greatest one because when we go to heaven and we see him you and i would not have a choice but to praise him and so what is taking place down here is the rehearsal and so i'll tell you what we better rehearse and do it really good because every time we mention the name lord god jesus christ you know master alpha omega beginning the end the prince of the mighty god the counselor the everlasting father the lion of the tribe of judah the i am we ought to mean that Right. There is no, pra there, listen, there is no just participation in that because his name is worthy Amen. to be praised. Amen. It is worthy to be praised. 
So when it comes, you see, like we, for example, we come in choir practices and do all of that and stuff. Hey, whenever we're going to mention his name, Jesus, Lord, we got to do it from our hearts. We got to mean that. He's not just you in practice because his name is above all names. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. His name is the greatest. He's given a name that is higher and greater than any other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue should confess that he is Lord to the honor and to the glory of God. So friend, when are we going to be praising him? We got to mean that. When it comes to praise, it must not be mere participation. There must be heart into it. All of our heart must be in praise. So we don't want to be honorers with lips and then our hearts are far from him. Man, he wants our heart. Man, that's why we receive him into our hearts. He goes down to the heart of man. So when it comes to praise, I could say, wow, that looks good. That sounds good. That is fine. But I want every one of us, he wants every one of us to mean that. It must come from our heart. So what we're giving him, he wants more than that. He wants more than that. But I'll tell you what, this afternoon may look as though I'm stepping on your toes, but never mind because I'm stepping on mine too. Amen? Oh yeah, I'm stepping on my, I'm stepping on my toes too. Because I tell you what, in everything I do when it comes to praise, I ought to do better. I must mean it from my heart. Man, not only when it's a matter of praise, but if we turn to the gospel of Mark in chapters numbers 12, Mark's gospel and chapters numbers 12, there is an interesting story here. Chapters 12 and from verse numbers 41 of the gospel of Mark. From verse numbers 41 of chapters 12 of Mark. The Bible says here, and Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much and there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites that make a feathering and he called unto his disciples and said unto them verily I say unto you that this poor widow had cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of the abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now, just imagine if Jesus could have sit over on the other side and become a key observer of that situation. It had to be important. It just had to be important that he set aside himself from every other thing. I mean, you would, you would imagine that there would have been sick people around. I mean, there would have been a lot of other activities around. The scribes and the Pharisees would have been around. And he did not... He forgot, he, I mean, he just didn't engage in no arguments and no quarrel with them. The se- what took center stage was that episode with the old woman, that widow woman that is giving her two mites. Yep. And then on top of that, not only that he was a key observer in that situation, he took it, he called his disciples, and he made a lesson out of it for them. He made a lesson. And then he began. And so when it comes to the matter of giving, we notice that Jesus is saying there were lots of people that was participating in giving. Yeah. There were good participants. And God, even if you are participants, God would take 
what you have done and he will turn it into his own good. He have often time had done that. He is God and he can do what he wants with that. But what God wants. You see, you would have done that and God would have taken it and he would have made good out of it. But it would have not benefited you and I spiritually. We would not have gained anything because we did it out of participation and not out of our hearts. Amen. Our hearts was not in it. See? And what God wants, as Jesus is saying, listen, what we want, we see someone who had little. And whether she had much or whether she had little, that's not the real issue. But the real issue is that, that she gave it out of her heart. Her heart was in her giving. See? As if it's to say that if this woman had a million, she probably would have easily give it anyway and be happy about it. Now, you may, have your, you may have your doubts about that. But let's take, for example, of course, let's just by illustration, just to uh, solidify that what I'm trying to say here. Let's take Martha and Mary. In John chapter 12, the Bible says that Mary, she took a pong of oil to speak and she anointed the feet of Jesus. And Judah says, why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 pence? The Bible said, not that he cared for the poor, but he was a thief and he had the bag. And he bare the, which was, that was, was put into the bag. Now, you know that thieves, that they know the prizes of everything around town. Sure. Sure. They know what, what, it, what everything costs because they are thieves. Right. They, so they know what it costs. Now, but here it is that he said, why wasn't it sold for 300 pence? The average day's work is one pence. Yeah. For the agriculture worker especially, one pence. So it means, therefore, that if that ointment cost 300 pence, Martha was willing to take the value of one year worth of work and put it at the feet of Jesus. And if Martha could take the year worth of work and put it at the feet of Jesus and the, the, the order just go up, and, you know, but she was just trying to honor God. You telling me that this poor widow woman, that if she had a million or whatever she had, she wouldn't have been willing to do it? She could have well been willing to just do it. Because she come there and she was going to just give to Jesus. She was going to give to the Lord. Not by participation, but out of her heart. And whatever we give, whenever we give, whether it's in missions or whatever, we must all do it beyond. Move beyond participation. And move and give with the heart. And I'll tell you what. God would love you for it. God will bless you for it. Oh, God would honor you for it. His name would be lifted up and be exalted for it. Because people are not just honoring him with mouths and lips. But they are lifting him up and they are honoring him with their hearts. Could you imagine what a Sunday morning would be like if all of Emmanuel Baptist would be here and it is all heart. I mean, it is just all heart. Yeah. All heart. I could imagine how, how ticklish that woman was. How fun it was for her to give. Yeah. Yeah. She was happy about giving because it was all from her heart. Yeah. So when it comes to praise, God wants us to move beyond participation and give and, and praise with our heart. When it comes to giving, he wants us to move beyond participation and participation, sorry, as illustrated and gave from the heart. Good. Thirdly, not only them two, but when it comes to service, Revelation chapters numbers two. Revelation chapters numbers two. Revelation chapters numbers two. The second chapter of the book of Revelation. From verse number one, the Bible says here, from verse number one, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlestick. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst bear them which are evil, 
and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them lies and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted there is no doubt that this church here was a working church I don't think the past of the church had a problem with participation now this church here had three real good pastors Paul was one of the pastors John was one of the pastors Timothy was one of the pastors somebody will say man I'll tell you what if I had three pastors I'd be the best Christian <laughs> man, that's what they would think they say I'll be the best Christian man I'll be the best Christian well but they had three great pastors and they worked hard as you would notice a lot of work and labor is mentioned as a matter of fact in verse down in verse number three he mentioned that the that in the end he said that thou hast labored and has not fainted giving you an indication that they worked so hard and they was not weary in their well-doing they kept on working they didn't say you know what man i've been i'm i'm, I'm doing all the workload is falling i'm doing too much for this church i'm just doing too much i, I can't listen I, I need to put a hole no they kept on they has not fainted they kept on so when it comes to participation in the service people were at their post they cleaned it if they had to they gave out the tracks i mean the people every person was in their post the, those for the nursery those for you know for the songbook those in all the, the musician and the choir and i mean just name it the security details everything everybody was doing what they're supposed to do they were laboring they were participating in their service they were participating. But then, the next verse. Something was wrong. He says, thou, he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. How could God have a problem with a participating church like that? Something was missing. Heart was missing. <laughs> He said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against because thou hast left thy first love. Yeah. And that is one thing that is not by participation. Right. It is by heart. Yeah. Love, love. It is not by participation. It comes from the heart. Good. He said, because thou hast left thy first love. And he said, repent yeah. from right. that. So the church, they had no problem in participating. Yeah. But from the heart. I'm trying to imagine to myself, even as a preacher, how many times may I have monked the pulpit? And I did it out of participation. I knew what to do. I knew what to say. I had the sermon, it was outlined. So all I did, I was able to perform. See? I was able to perform. Somebody might have even gotten saved. Christian might have been even drawn closer to God. But the problem is, between me and him. <laughs> Between me and God. The problem lies. Because my heart was not where it's supposed to be in it. I honored him with my lips and my mouth. But heart. See what I, mean? I meant well with what I did. You mean? I was happy to do it. There was never in my mind a time when I said, I don't want to do it. But, I was still, my heart was not where I was supposed to be with him. And he's not, he, doesn't, he wants us when in our service to move beyond participate. Well, you know, I'll do it because the preacher will be happy. I, I'm glad. What, you know, I'm glad about what Joseph said. Joseph said, when Potiphar's wife came, Joseph said, listen, how can I do this against God? Right, right, right. He didn't say, how can I do this against Potiphar? He helped me. He's a good master to me. And he loved me and stuff like that. No, that was secondary. The first thing was God. Yeah. Yeah. Was God. And so when it comes to our service, God wants us to move beyond participation. And do it 
serve with our heart a labor of love lastly Mark, Mark's gospel chapters number 6 the gospel of Mark in chapters numbers 6 and verse numbers 52 chapter 6 of the gospel of Mark and verse numbers 52 the Bible says here for they considered not the miracle of the loaves for their heart was hardened so when it comes to the matter of consideration as if it's to say what I'm trying to say when we talk about consideration is that that before we do what we want to do next we we'll consider what Jesus has done for us you know what I mean? Yeah. We will take into account what God has done for us. Right. Which will dictate or determine what I do next. Because yeah. every time as a Christian, before we sin, we consider or we pay attention or we, uh, we, we think about what Jesus has done on Calvary. Yeah. I tell you what, a lot of times we will avoid that sin. Because yeah. when we remember him, and so when it comes to consideration, he wants us to move beyond participation and do it with our hearts. Because the miracle here, as we know, the miracles of the loaves, the Bible said that they, the disciples, they did not consider the miracles of the loaves because their hearts were hardened. The problem was their hearts. Now, when Jesus this, as first of all, they said, Master, let's send these people home. And then Jesus said, no, let's see what money we have. Let's see if we could buy them some bread. Let's see if we could help them to feed them and stuff like that. And they were just not going to be a part of that. He said, go around and see what you get. They came around, they found that little boy with the five loaves and the fishes and stuff like that. And Philip, I think, was the one that took it and he brought it to the Master. So now you see that Philip participated. Okay? He started in the participation. Then, on top of that, because remember, they were the one going and looking and seeing what they're getting. So they were participating. Okay? We're going. Even when it came to that, Jesus took the loaves and he prayed and he gave it to them and they went and they handed it out. So the disciples were the ones distributing. Yep. So were they not participating? Yep. So they were part of the miracle. Right. They participated yep. in a miracle. Yep. <laughs> you see what I mean? They helped yep. hand out the bread. They helped, and the fish, they helped. They were all there. Look, you, you want more? I mean, I'll tell you what, they were good. I mean, they, they, was a, they were good hosts, if you please. I mean, they did everything what they're supposed to do. I mean, if they were given tips, I saw somebody would have been willing to give them a good tip. Because the participation was good. But then, after it all finished, Jesus, the Bible tells us here, they had no consideration for that because something was wrong their heart was hard their hearts when they did it it was not in the right place so there was no problem with participation and if it's to say that that miracle was so special that miracle was a very special miracle because here's what happened but uh, 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 Pastor uh, Foster here's what happened in here now, it's the first time. There might be uh, mathematicians here, and there might be people uh, in college and otherwise and stuff like that, and you probably might have been graduated whether you, 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 you know, your BS and your PhD or your master's or whatever the case may be. Good for you. To God be the glory. Now, but it's the first time I've ever seen, and without any mathematical explanation, I haven't gotten one yet. I've never seen a situation where the fraction becomes more than the whole. Started off with five loaves and then you end up with 12 baskets of fragments. So the fraction was more than the whole. Jairus tells Jesus, come to my house and heal my daughter. 
Jairus got more than a healing, he got a resurrection. The Bible tells us that God is able to give us more abundantly than we ask or even think. With Jesus, you would always get more than what you expect. You'd always get more. And I tell you what, when it comes to question and answer, Jesus is the only person that always gives more answers than the questions that was asked. And so with him, you'd always get more. Young people, you will get more in Jesus than this world could ever offer you. If you'd follow him, you'll get more in this book, the more knowledge and understanding and wisdom than what the university of the world could ever give to you. You've got to hold this book above everything. Do you know the disciples here, they participated but not with the right heart. I wonder how many times have we done that? We serve, we do everything in the church. And I tell you what, friend, oftentimes we go back on the greatest miracle that has ever happened to us when Jesus saved us. We go back on that. We forget. We didn't consider that he took us out from the miry clay and he set our feet upon a rock. He, he straightened our broken homes. He saved, you know, he take us out from drunkenness and reveling and debaucheries and all every kind of wicked living. And he set us on the right path and he put everything right for us because we trusted him as Lord and Savior. And we don't often, we did not consider that miracle. Hmm? We serve haphazardly. I mean, we come to church as though it's a job or it's a hard work and we're tired of it. We fail to consider that great miracle. Because so often time, at the moment, our hearts are hardened and not in the right place. So, I believe that God wants more than what we are given. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we thank you, we honor you, we exalt you. And Father, Lord, we pray, God, may you bless your word to our hearts. And help us, Lord, to serve you with all our hearts. We thank you and we give you the praise. And bless the rest of the service here in Jesus' name. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.